Welcome, Deronda here with Foods 101. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make loaf bread. Perfectly delicious. The ingredients you're gonna need is four and a half to five cups of unbleached flour. Unbleached flour is a flour they haven't bleached to make it perfectly white. One and three-fourths cups of whole milk. One package of your active dry yeast. Two tablespoons of granulated sugar. Two teaspoons of salt. Two tablespoons of all vegetable shortening and one half cup of water. We want our water at 105 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got a reading of 114, so that's perfect. And we're gonna dissolve our yeast in it. Pour it into the warm water. Give it a little stirring. Sit this off to the side until ready to use. Melt your all vegetable shortening in the microwave, 15 seconds at a time. This is after 30 seconds. Using a stand mixer, I'm gonna use the dough hook. I'm adding my milk, and I took the chill off the milk using the microwave until I got a 110 degree Fahrenheit reading. Add your salt and the sugar along with the yeast and ooh, that smells so good. I like to give it a little swirl. Add your melted shortening. Swish it around just a little bit. Spoon in two cups of flour so we can get the flour well blended in with the other ingredients. Start on low so you won't end up getting a flour shower. We want to scrape down the sides of our bowl. Add an additional one cup of flour. Put on low again, we're gonna mix it in. Now that it's looking like this and I've been scraping down the sides of the bowl, we're gonna add the remaining flour. Start on low until it's well incorporated. Increase the speed a little bit. Now, I'm gonna scrape down the sides of the bowl again. You don't want your flour sticking to the side of your bowl. Eventually your dough is going to be pulling loose from the sides of the bowl. Continue kneading for the next 10 minutes. After five minutes you can see how that dough is sticking to the side of our bowl. When that happens you're going to add a couple of spoonfuls of your unbleached flour. And again we're going to start incorporating this and just be sure that you scrape down the sides of your bowl. After 10 minutes, your dough should be pulling loose from the sides of the bowl. Transport this over into a larger bowl. Add your dough, and I'm just using my hands. It makes it a whole lot easier. Cover with a tea towel, or you can use paper towels in a nice, warm, draft-free area for one hour or until it doubles in size. While the dough is rising, I'm lightly greasing two four by eight inch loaf pans. It's just a little vegetable oil on a paper towel. I'm using a regular loaf pan and I'm gonna be using a porcelain loaf pan. I'm curious to see how each turn out. Lightly flour your surface. Look at our dough. I've had it rising for about an hour and as you can see, put a little flour on it because I don't want my fingers to stick to it, but we just want to punch it down so we can get all the air out. And then we're going to transport it over here onto our floured surface. Ooh, and that feels so much fun. Reminds you of working in Play-Doh. You just want to make sure that it's not sticking to your hands. Bring it into the center, punch it down. And then with a knife, we're going to divide this evenly in half. Roll it into two round balls. Set it here. Do the same with this one. See, I'm pulling it in just a little bit and tucking it in there on the bottom. And then we're going to let these sit here for 10 minutes and let them rest. After 10 minutes, we're going to take each ball. We're going to flatten it out so we can make sure to get rid of any air bubbles. And we're going to roll it into a 14 by 8 inch rectangle. If it sticks on the bottom, which mine is, just add a little bit of flour. You don't want to overdo it on the flour. And so we'll get this rectangle rolled out to keep working with it. Actually, you can really just pat it out. Just do the best you can. It's not always so perfect, but that's okay. Starting with the smaller end, we're going to tightly start rolling it up. And then we're going to seal the end by pinching it in 
with the rest of the dough, seal the edges, turn it over, and with that prepared loaf pan, pop it in here. And sit this off to the side for the next 45 to 60 minutes so it can rise. This is my last one. You just roll it, tuck the ends under, put it here in its baking loaf, and then again, we're just gonna let it sit for 45 minutes to an hour. It's been an hour, and looky there, we've got our dough perfectly rise just the way we need it. And these are off to a 375 degree preheated oven on the middle rack for the first 30 minutes. Use your timer and no peaking. After 30 minutes, we're going to cover each loaf with a piece of tin foil and bake for an additional 15 minutes. Use your timer and no peaking. Bread loaf has baked and this foil on the top just keeps the top of the bread from getting overly browned. And here comes the second loaf. Look how fantastic those are. The important thing is to get them out of their pans quickly. You don't want them sweating or getting soggy around the edge and they should just pop right out and look how beautiful and golden that is. Boy, do I wish you could be here and smell this freshly baked bread aroma. Do the same with this. It's a little warm, so be careful. Super careful. Look how beautiful and golden that is. Cool down for about 30 minutes and I'll cut into it and show you what it looks like on the inside. And it is so warm. Let's see what this bread loaf looks like on the inside. It's important to always use a serrated knife. You see those little teeth there on the end? That'll give you a lovely cut. Mmm. And if you could smell this freshly baked bread. Wow. Looky there. How lovely and soft that is just like the best homemade bread ever and it's still super duper warm just like sandwich bread but you've made it homemade all right let's give it a try mmm wow look how soft and tender and golden the top of that is so so fresh so pliable Mmm, absolutely the best homemade bread. With a little butter, I couldn't resist. You will not be disappointed with this white loaf bread. And it really doesn't need any butter. Looky there on the inside and on the sides and the bottom. Woo, beautiful golden in color. I'm Deronda with Foods 101. Give me thumbs up, leave me a comment, hit that notification bell to be the first to get my new YouTube food videos. Thanks a million for watching and I'll catch you lovely people later.